start with the 2D array and bubble sort and before that I'm going to show you the calibration of a one dimensional array. Okay. All right, this is the declaration of a one dimensional array. It will create five boxes. Same name and same data type. All of the values inside will be of integer data type. Okay, and the values are indexed. So one, two, three, four, five are the indices of the values. Now, a 2D array is declared by two indices. Okay, it requires two indices. So for the 2D array, the whole of the syntax is same. Let's create a square. Okay, of same integer. Okay. This is just like X. This is just like Y. Or we can call them as row and column okay what this declaration will do in the memory it will declare five rows and five columns means all right this is a two-dimensional array and it will have two indices and indices will be one two three four five and similarly it will have column headings as one two three four and five okay each of the boxes will require two indices row as i and column as j i will tell why i have renamed these as uh, i and j each box will require two indices i and j i and j i and j i and j okay i represents row and j represents column like uh, for example i put a question mark in this box now you should be able to tell which row is it and which column number is it so row number is four and column number is three so ij will be four and three okay four and three the intersection of these two will lead us to the this box okay so i and j will be four and three row first i haven't put any data inside so i'll try to make them look as indices okay four and three sitting in the corner four and three is the address for this box okay now let us try to create the code for it we'll assume the same name as my array okay a declaration has already been done for the size five declare the top declaration declare my array as array one to five of integer now let us try to put the data inside that for as we know how many times you have to run we have to run for five items so the limit for the loop is already known in this case uh, with the limit of the number of iterations are known the for loop is the best case scenario for j gets the value one to five all right we'll do my array shift it and put my array j done and then we'll close the loop what this loop will do the j is going from one to five one by one one at a time okay the loop will start j having the value as one then it will come down it will take input into my array of j so not all now let us create a my array of j one two three four and five boxes one two three four and five we are in the single dimension array back again okay 
assuming the single dimensional array this will this chunk of code will do what this will take the input into five boxes of a 1d array by running it once it produced five boxes okay it produced means it took the input into five boxes okay let us now run the code back again what it should do it should again take input into five boxes it will replace the values in the same array okay for now just consider it as it will declare another array and take take five inputs into the second array three four five okay let us now run the code again third time which code the whole chunk the whole chunk of this code being run for the third time and the for the third time it will create and do the same that it will take five inputs because the code is running for five items one two three four five so we saw that running this code again and again did what it created more new rows it created more new rows by running this chunk of code again we are in the single dimensional array and all the things will be happening in the same row replacing the old values now we don't want the old values to be replaced we want these three boxes to be stacked up to be stacked up like this okay five by five five rows and five columns okay so i'll be creating a change and the change will be i'll be now putting two indices my array now considering my array to be a 2d array i comma j okay, this is the code to input values into the five by five and to declare the two dimensional array the syntax is up there okay now let us just dry run the code okay it says now i'm in the dry run mode it will do what it will initialize the value of i by one and then after initializing the value by one it will check the limit it is under the limit it will come down to the second loop okay the second loop loop will do what it will initialize the j and then we'll check the limit it is under the limit of five okay fine it will then after running that part of the for loop header it will come down to the input command okay or input statement in the input statement it is doing what my array input into my array of i and j now we have both of them one comma one okay now let us try to fill one comma one my array so let us try uh, let us put the name of this two dimensional array which is also called a matrix my array my array one comma one what is one comma one this is row one okay because the first index is for the row and the second index is for the column this is one comma one the intersection of these two lead us to the first box okay so now the first input will be in the first top left box okay which has the index of one comma one now let us move forward try running after doing the input command it will come down to the next of j and j will be two now and then that's important to understand here the next j will send the loop back to the four okay because until the inner loop is finished running for five times it cannot come outside it cannot come outside until the inner loop is done finishing for running for five times okay so the j will be two and what remained the i i remained at one it will move back to the for loop now no initialization it will just simply check the limit it is under the limit okay of five now again what is the command to be performed input command we have the i as one and now we have j for j as two okay i will remain one and we'll have j as two now okay j is 2 1 comma 2 that means row number 1 and column number 2 row number 1 is this one and column number 2 is this one 
so it will be the second box from the top left similarly after inputting into the second box it will do next to the j and j will be three it will move back up checking the limit it will input into i will remain one and j will be three so one comma three will be the third box this one then it will do this one then it will do this one okay after that after that j will be after performing into first row and last column which is five one comma five after inputting into that which will be again one comma five it will come down to next j it will do j to the six okay it will move back to the header and will check the limit and limit is beyond five so what will happen after the value of six the loop will break out and it will be next i so i will be two now it will move back to this it will check the limit it is the i has the value two now it is under the limit of five and again it will come down to the inner loop the inner loop will again run five times for the row number two okay for the row number two it will run one two three four five similarly the inner loop will break again after the index value of five it will come down to the third loop and again so this is the procedure of 2d array that first of all we need to have a declaration for 2d array then we must use two loops two loops for filling in the data into the 2d array the outermost loop defines the number of rows the innermost loop defines the values in the columns okay like the outermost row as first row the inner loop will run for number of columns one two three four five so inner loop is for columns and outer loop is for row that was the reason i did it here x and y mathematically x is for number of rows y is for number of columns and for the uh, loop indices or loop variables or loop counters we use i and j okay so this was the whole concept of two dimensional array i hope so it will clear most of the confusions if not just run the video back and try to understand from the point where did you not get it okay